Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Henry Phillips of the Open Door House of Prayer. And uh, tonight we're going to be uh, in the book of John, uh, chapter 17, verses 6 through 21. Uh, the title of our lesson tonight is Jesus Prays for Believers. But before that, let us go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We glorify you. We come before you, Lord, just thanking you for this day. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have uh, done, Heavenly Father, to allow us to get through this day. Uh, Lord, we come to you right now bringing uh, several members of our church before you, Heavenly Father. Uh, there are those that are ill, those that are hospitalized, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have those that are celebrating tonight. Hallelujah. Touch them and bless them, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But now, Lord, as we delve into your word, we ask that you would look upon us, touch our minds, touch our hearts, and enlighten the eyes of our understanding, Heavenly Father, so that we can get what we need to go out and live this life of salvation. Go out, Heavenly Father, and do your will. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to be reading uh, John 17, verses 6 through 21, until you're hearing from the New Living Translation. It reads, I have revealed to the ones you gave me from this world. This is Jesus talking. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. Verse nine, my prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they be, so they bring me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world; they are staying in this world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Verse 12, during my time here, I protected them by the power of your name. During my time here, this is verse 12. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction, as the scripture foretold. Verse 13, now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking for you to take them out of the world but to keep them safe from the evil one. Verse 16, they do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Verse 18, just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Amen. I've just read into you hearing uh, John chapter 17, uh, verses 6 through 21. 
Now, the occasion of uh, this prayer, as I said, Jesus prays for believers, is, uh, again, A.D. 30. Uh, our, our last four lessons have come in the time of uh, A.D. 30. Uh, and this time in this year is actually uh, right before Jesus is uh, uh, arrested. He, he's praying with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane in Jerusalem. And, uh, and so he's already prayed, hey, Lord, if it's your will, let this pass. But uh, he said, your will be done. Now that he realizes that he must do the will of the Father, he says, Father, I, I need you to look over my disciples. They are going to be going out into the world, uh, fulfilling this mission. And you know that uh, while I was here on the earth, I shared things with them. And uh, I need you to sort of look out for them. So, uh, so he's praying this prayer. And, and we could sort of look at it in a couple of, through, a couple of different ways. Let, let me outline it for you. Uh, in verses six through eight, uh, he's praying for God's glory. And then verses nine through 19, he starts praying for the disciples. And then in verses 20 and 21, he's praying for every believer. So he's not just praying for the people that's following him right there in the present time. He's praying, praying for people that will believe in the future. That's you and me. So Jesus covers everybody in this prayer. <laughs> so the setting of the prayer is the Garden of Gethsemane. He, uh, uh, he's getting ready to be arrested, and uh, he, he, <laughs> uh, my technology don't want to work. Here it goes. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Seventeen six. And in, uh, in verse 12, he says, during my time here, I protected them uh, by the power of the name that you gave me. And I guarded them so that not one was lost. And he said, wait, before anybody, you know, brings up this caveat, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. Except for the one that's headed for destruction, as the, the, the scriptures foretell, told. So Judas ain't in the garden there with him right there because he's busy going and bringing the officials to come and arrest Jesus. But Jesus said, hey, uh, while, while I've been here, I've protected them by the name that you gave me. Now that I'm getting ready to leave out of this world, I need you to protect them, Lord. So how had Jesus manifested God's name to the disciples? And that that that's in that first verse, uh, six, verse six. I'll ask the question again. How had Jesus manifested God's name to the disciples? Out of the world, I, they were, and thou gavest them me, mm -hmm. and kept. Thy name, thy word. Your word. So, so Jesus <clears throat> was sharing with the disciples all that God was given to him. Mm -hmm. And and he used Old Testament scripture. Uh, so he used the 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 uh, the, the Torah. That's what the Jewish people call the first five books of our Bible. They call that the Torah or the books of Moses. And then they all, he also used the words of the prophets uh, to, to teach them. But then 
as we find like on the Sermon on the Mount and uh, different various areas where Jesus is teaching. He taught through parables. The, he's, he's leaving them God's word as God has given it to, to uh, him. So these words hadn't been written down yet, but he, he, he definitely uses uh, parables. He uses his personal interaction with them. Uh, he uses and goes into the synagogue and he's teaching his disciples by example. And so this is how Jesus is manifesting uh, God's name to the disciples through, through his example and through uh, working with them in the word. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, my prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me. Again, he's praying for the disciples there in uh, verse nine. And then he said in verse 11, now I am departing from the world. They're staying here. <laughs> They're staying in this world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name. So, so uh, Jesus is asking, hey, God, by the power of your name, protect them. Uh, verse 14 I have given them your word and the word hate and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world I'm not asking you to take them out of the world but to keep them safe from the evil one so uh Jesus is asking for the protection of his disciples amen and uh one of the ways that he's asking that his disciples be protected is through the power of God's name and through the word that he's given them. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is saying, hey, I've given them the word. I, I need you to make them separate from the world. We call this process sanctification. Uh, so, so, so Jesus is saying, God, sanctify them. And uh, what Jesus is, is saying is, hey, I've set myself aside. I've consecrated myself to do your will. Now, uh, that's something that priests would do when they're getting ready to make a sacrifice to God. And so Jesus is getting ready to become that final sacrifice. He's the high priest. Mm -hmm. setting his self aside to be that sacrifice. And now he's asking that his uh, his disciples be uh, set aside also. Mm -hmm. Sanctify. And the way that uh, we achieve this sanctification is by the power of God's word. Mm -hmm. So it is necessary for us to read God's word because uh, the, this process of sanctification is actually, uh, it, it's almost a threefold uh, proposition here. Jesus's prayer was that God the Father would sanctify the disciples through his truth. He further identified the truth with God's word. Uh, to sanctify means to make holy or to set apart. It is most often used in setting someone or something apart from sin and unto God in his name, for his use. Now, there's a past aspect of the doctrine of sanctification in that God has set every believer aside for himself, clothing him uh, positionally with the holiness of Christ. And uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter one, verse two, and look at that. First Corinthians chapter one, verse two. It says, I'm writing to God's church. This is Paul saying, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth 
to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Jesus Christ, just as he did for all the people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So when, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are set aside in that moment. You are sanctified in that moment. Now, G God did that when Jesus gave himself on the cross. There yeah. is also a future aspect uh, that believers will be conformed completely in Christ's holiness and completely separated from sin when he returns. And we can find that in First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians five, and twenty three. Uh, and this is Paul writing to the Thessalonians. He says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. So that that's that's the the uh, the future aspect of of the sanctification. When Jesus Christ returns again, set aside perfectly uh, for Jesus' use. Now, in Jesus' prayer, there's also a present aspect of sanctification. This is the progressive setting apart of believers as we grow in holiness. So uh, this type of sanctification is accomplished by us reading the word and becoming more like Jesus through our application of the word in our life. Uh, we can find this in Philippians. Oh, Philippians. Philippians, second chapter, uh, verses 12 and 13. It says, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. This is Paul again, writing to the Philippians. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now, this is important in understanding this uh, this present aspect of sanctification because we can't do it in and of ourselves. It takes the power of God working in us to keep us separate. <clears throat> so God's power is always working to keep us separate, but the thing that we have to do is we have to be God's co-workers in this. So. The way that we can do this is by reading his word and saying, I need to apply God's word to my life. Mm -hmm. So uh, so this further sets us aside because the more that we read God's word and the more that we apply God's words to our life, the more we start to look like Christ and start to look like that person that he's coming back for in the future. Amen. Amen. So, so that's how we can accomplish that personal sanctification is, is by saying to ourselves, hey, I need to be in the word because I want to do the will of the Father. Jesus prayed for me to be able to do the will of the Father, and he knew that it is by his word, it's by the truth that we can do this. And so he said, I shared the word with him. And uh, now I need you to protect them. And the way that we stay protected from anything evil in this world is by continuing to be in the will of the Father and knowing the will of the Father comes from reading his word. So 
Jesus has expressed his concern uh, about the word. Uh, and then Jesus is expressing his spiritual protection over the disciples. Now Jesus is getting ready to uh, express his concern over the unity of the saints. And we find that in verses 20 and 21. He says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray, verse 21, that they will be all, that, that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in the Father, uh, I'm sorry, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. So, so isn't it amazing that Jesus knows what's before him? Mm -hmm. it, it is his death that's coming on the cross. Mm -hmm. And he's praying for us. Amen. He's praying for our protection. <clears throat> that, 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 that's love, folks. <laughs> that, that, that's love. It's like, I, I know that my work here is finished, but Father, I, I, I need you to protect those that are coming behind me, those that are going to be called according to my name. Uh, mm -hmm. Christians, followers of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so really quickly, I want to take you to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter four, verse three. And I believe this is just going to uh, re-emphasize this unity. Uh, <laughs> Paul, again, is writing to the Ephesians. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Mm -hmm. And that glorious hope is that when Jesus returns, he is going to take everyone that believes in him to heaven with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, now, some, some people might be looking at the Christian church right now and saying, hey, it, it don't seem too unified. What, uh, what we have to make sure that we understand is that it's not saying, hey, you got to believe everything I believe. We don't compromise on certain things. For instance, you can't say, oh, yeah, no, Jesus didn't really die on the cross. No, you're not a believer. <laughs> you're not a part of this unity. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, no, Jesus wasn't born of a virgin. He wasn't born by Mary. That's, no, we don't, we, we can't compromise that. I'm sorry. So, so there's some, there's a list of things that it makes all of us followers. There's some other things that we disagree on and uh, Paul writes about them. Uh, and uh, Romans chapter 13, I believe. Uh, no, that's that's a love paragraph. Uh, it might be 14, but Paul, Paul writes, hey, you know, if one of you want to keep this fast day and the other one doesn't want to keep it, you know, uh, just be cool. I mean, for instance, there's a group of, of Christians that believe, oh, we, we should only... Uh, we should go to church on Saturdays because that's the Sabbath. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of believers that go 
to church on Sunday because we call that the Lord's Day. That, hey, which which day you want to honor God? That's cool. I mean, because to tell you the truth, we should honor him every day. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but but if you telling me, oh, hey, no, Jesus wasn't born uh, of Mary, then we got problems. We can't be unified there. So, so we have this word ecumenical, meaning uh, all come together. Uh, you know, I, I can sit down with people of other faiths, but I'm not going to be united with them as I am with other Christians. So, uh, are there any questions about tonight's lesson, Jesus prays for believers? Let, let me outline it for you again. Jesus showed his desire concerning uh, God's word. Then he showed his desire concerning the spiritual protection of his disciples. Then he showed his desire regarding sanctification. And then he concluded his prayer with his desire concerning the unity of his disciples. Um, there was one thing that I came to my mind when we were talking about reading mm -hmm. uh, word. And many times we miss um, the fact that it's a, uh, uh, there's a scripture that says the washing and the renewing by his word. Mm -hmm. And we miss that we're to be washed. Yes. And uh, renewed when we read the word. Sometimes uh, when I say we miss it, we'll skim through it and not get anything. Mm -hmm. Because, and, you okay. know, we're not allowing ourselves to, as they say, eat the word. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, on Sunday and in, in, in Sunday's message, I had even talked about that there's people that read God's word daily, but it doesn't affect them because they are not coming to it with the expectation of mm -hmm. learning anything from it, with the expectation of God revealing himself to them. So uh, it, it, it's, it's almost like this. Uh, our belief in Jesus is, is not something that's just in our head. It's, it's not an intellectual uh, exercise. It's not an academic exercise. It yeah. is a way of life. Yeah. And, and, and what we have to come to understand is that our faith commitment mm -hmm. is, is action. It, it's, it's not just, hey, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian. There, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people out there, and I was thinking about it this afternoon when I was reading this, uh, this, uh, this scripture. There's a lot of people out there that call themselves Christians. They'll, they'll go through the, the process of even making sure that they get married in the church, mm -hmm. you know, but do they put their life on the line for their belief in that? Right. See, uh, a, a person that, that has convictions, a person that has convictions is going to put their life on the line for those convictions. A person that has a casual belief when when things start flying and stuff like that, that belief flies with it. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to live a life to where we're saying, Jesus, I believe in your word and this is my life. Yeah. Uh, and we come to the word seeking that. We, we, we read his word looking for our life in the word. God, I, would, I need you to reveal yourself to me because I want you I want to do your will. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then that 
as you said, cleanses us and refreshes us and renews us because we become sanctified by doing his will. Now, the, like I said, the act of sanctification was done back on the cross. But we continually transform ourselves into the person that we want to look like, Jesus Christ, when we continually do his will. And the yes. way that we figure out his will is by reading his word and gaining strength from that truth. Yes. Gaining Amen. strength from that truth to go out into the world and do his will. Amen. And, and we can't come to this by our own. It's God's grace that has allowed us to, to believe. And so we are co-workers with Christ in our sanctification. Glory to God. Amen. But like I said, back in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was praying for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He loved us that much that he said, hey, Father, I need you to do this because uh, the word is going to go out and people are going to believe. Mm -hmm. And I, I need them to be protected. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Yeah. And there was one thing that he had said in us, along with, you know, that other that I was saying about the washing. Um, and he said in verse uh, 11, as we are. Mm -hmm. in the game, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so much so, we to be so much so like the word. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. United. And that, that's, uh, that's in one of my uh, practical points that, that, uh, that just as Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God are united as the Trinity. We need to absorb the word so that we can look at that model and be like it and be like them in unity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. So speaking of uh, the practical points, why don't I just get to them? <laughs> Uh, first practical point, Jesus's gracious love for us displays God and his glory to the whole world. It, matter of fact, uh, Jesus said, hey, I want my disciples, I want my followers to be known by the love that they have for one another and for me. Glory to God. Yeah. <clears throat> Glory to God. And so... And so we should seek unity with each other. We should seek unity with God as modeled by the Trinity, mm -hmm. as, as modeled by God the Father, uh, God in this Holy Spirit, and God the Son. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have to worry about an evil power being stronger than Jesus, because mm -hmm. it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, uh, Verse 12, Jesus said, during my time here, I protected them by the power of the name that you gave me. <laughs> Excuse me. I guarded them so that uh, not one was lost, except, you know, the one that was headed to destruction. But, mm -hmm. but Jesus said, you gave me this name. Yeah. Now they can use this name yeah. to be guarded, to be kept. So nothing, nothing in this world can overcome the power of Christ. Amen. And, and we need to take, we need to take security in that mm -hmm. uh, because there, there's going to be all kinds of situations that come up that want us to think, you know, this is your end. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and we yeah. are protected by the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, so, so we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry because yeah. we are protected and there's no, no power 
Hallelujah. No power on this earth, no power in this universe that's stronger than the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, fourth one, knowledge of God's truth will sanctify us as we live in the world. So we, we get this knowledge of God's truth by reading his word and living out his word, and that sanctifies us. Amen. So we can be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. All right. And then finally, Jesus prayed for his followers to be united, unified. And, and that means every believer, everybody that that says they believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's prayed for our unity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, uh, are there any questions, comments, or suggestions? No. All right. Uh, no comment, just that it was a great lesson. And amen. I love the point about we're unified by, you know, the main point. Of believing who Jesus is and so forth. That was good to hear. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, Pastor Griffin, could you uh, close us in prayer then? All right. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what we have received in our hearts tonight. We thank you for your word, Heavenly Father. Lord, that, that you protected us and you guards us heavenly father and you uh manifested your word in us and through us lord god we thank you heavenly father we lord god we pray heavenly father god that as we have received your word tonight that we will go out and that we will carry out the mandate that you've given us father to share the good news of the gospel and to walk in unity and oneness with each and every one we thank you, Father. We pray, God, your blessings upon Pastor Philip, that you will continue to bless him. Father, that you will continue to fill him with your wisdom, knowledge, and revelation, and spirit of counsel upon him. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Uh,